Hey, Chicago, what do you say? Welcome to the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top rated sports book. Make sure you download the app and use the code CHGO when you sign up. Luke Stuckmeyer, Ryan Herrera, Cody Del Mendo on a chilly Monday in Chicago. And uh, we got lots to talk about because, guys, uh, it looks like looks like some of this will start to heat up because of rule five rosters and all that Mm -hmm. stuff in the next 24 hours. We'll see. I see Shane, first one in the chat, always. Uh, Always. He's always the first one. Yeah, right. If you're Mm -hmm. listening to this later, uh, just on a podcast download, make sure you check us out on the YouTube live at 120 sometime. You can join the chat. It's a lot of fun. Become part of the show. Um, We've got a little family we've got brewing over there, right? We've got lots of people that are regulars in the group. One of our family did not make the tailgate yesterday, Cody, and it uh, was not me, and it was not you. Ryan, what gifts? We were uh, very upset. Everything. It was just under the weather. Still don't feel okay. too great. Um, you know, it was probably best not to go. No, it was a cold. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, no, just, just a little under the weather. Um, you know, just did not make it, but I'll believe the next one. I'll choose to believe this one. Even if I'm even if I'm under weather uh, to the next one, it's Bears Packers, so you know I'm gonna have to be there, and no doubt about it. It's yeah, gonna be even colder too. December fourth. I mean, it it could be colder. I mean, I just I'm hoping for one of those strange December days where it's like 50 or something. Yeah. But just you haven't heard, back, yeah. right? You haven't heard the most amazing story the whole weekend. Is it the phone? It's unbelievable. Okay, I, I need to hear the whole story, but I okay. Have so, to oh. <laughs> real quickly, we'll get to all the free agency stuff. In fact, we're also going to do a confidence pool ranking our confidence in off-season moves for the Cubs, and then it'll be a total of 55 points. But the, the story goes from the tailgate. I got there at 8.30 in the morning. It was still cold. They were, you know, Everything was set up. Jake was grilling the brats and the Italian sausage. We had donuts from stands out. We had, you know, Everything was set. And all of a sudden, the propane goes out on one of the tanks for one of the flat-top grills. Jake's like, we need propane. I'm like, all right, I'm on it. So I jump in my car. I drive down Roosevelt, and I find a – Home Depot, like maybe two miles away, uh, like Canal and, and and Roosevelt. I go in, I get the propane, yada, yada, yada. I come back and ha- before I come back, I'm, you know, I've got like 15 layers on. I'm doing one of these. Like, where's my, where's my iPhone? Where, where's my phone? Can't find it. Go back in. I went back into the Home Depot. They didn't have it. I, I'm, I'm searching my car. I'm turning the car upside down. I'm looking between the seats. Can't find it anywhere. Finally, I'm like, all right, that's it. I, I this this trip's going to cost me an iPhone and 150 dollars in propane. So, <laughs> I, I drive all the way back to the tailgate, two miles. And by the way, when I left the gravel parking lot at the tailgate, I fishtailed out of there just to show off a little bit. <laughs> and so I get to the Roosevelt and Michigan, and I look at my stereo, and the Bluetooth is connecting to music on my phone, and I'm like. Is that stuck from when I was driving in this morning from Arlington Heights? What's going on? Then all of a sudden something pops into me and I'm like, wait a minute. Did I, when I got out of the car this morning, did I set my phone on the roof <laughs> when I was getting my hot tea out of the car? And so I pull up to Kyle Williams. Kyle's, Kyle was taking the tickets for like people coming in. And I'm like, Kyle, Kyle, I didn't want to drive another foot. I'm like, Kyle, is, is there a phone on my roof? And he's like, what? I'm like, is there a phone on my roof? He's like, yeah, there's a cell phone. I'm like, there's a cell phone on my roof? <laughs> I drove two miles to Home Depot and back, and my phone was still on the roof of my car when I got back to the parking lot. It was – I mean, oh if you don't believe in miracles, forget the, the Olympic team beating the Russians once. This was 
the miracle of all miracles, a cell phone sticking to the roof of a car, driving on Chicago streets. We'll, we'll be talking about this in five years. We'll be like, remember when Stucky's phone stuck to his roof? I mean, I mean that phone did, was built different. All I could have on there was frozen. Stuff? Was it frozen to the roof? I don't know how. You had spider tack on it. Yeah, spider. You had spider tack on it, didn't you? You had your hand on your hands, and it just came off onto the phone yeah. before you put it down. The rubber. I will never again. If I every single case I buy will always have the rubbery kind of like silicone. I think that's what saved me. What a miracle! <laughs> I said I should have just gone to bed right there. I should have left. Should have left the tailgate and gone to bed and called it a day because it wasn't going to get better than that. And sure enough, the Bears blew it, and uh, that lived out to be true. Anyways, uh, we had a good time. Hopefully, we'll all be there for the – um, It was cold, but not as windy this time. I think it was, was better, good. Cody, I, I, yeah. because it wasn't as windy, and I expected it to be cold. I was kind of ready for it. Yeah, Cody was dancing. He was putting out the dance moves. People were all over the dance nice. floor. Out Wait, there. Was, was I, was talking, I was talking to Chris, our sales guy. And next thing I know, the Cupid Shuffle comes on, and nice. I had no choice. I was put under pressure. I, I had no choice. Did so. did Cody dance battle Raiders guy? That's what I want to know. Raiders guy was not there, but there was <sighs> Terrible. A, there, a lot of dancing going on. There were people breaking into dance, multiple different songs. Randomly, people would be over there dancing. I was like, what's going on? Like. <laughs> I love Brandon's comment. He says Luke's phone has that dog in it. <laughs> sure. I, sure. I'm telling you, that's just of all the different ways you can lose your phone on the roof of a car. You're almost never coming back from that one. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, no, but it, it, there's just like, I just love how I've it even got that. on your roof to begin with. It's such a you thing. I feel like, like you, I had, mean, you probably well, like had to put you know something in your I, car and you sat on it. Instead of putting it in your pocket, you put it under the roof of your car. Yeah. I, when I when I did it, I was thinking about it later in the day. I'm like, when I did it, I thought to myself, this is a bad idea. But I, I have no – I got to put it there for a second. And sure enough. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, all right. Let's get to the free agency stuff because there's been a lot going on. I mean, the Cubs made those roster adjustments, right? Yeah, we got 47. Might as well be 50 people in chat. Oh, there's 51. Got yes, a lot of comments it. already. So the, the like button. button. Yeah, yeah only ten have liked. Yeah. I think there's a chance we have an emergency podcast this week at some point. That I based would, on so. based on a signing or us. a trade. <laughs> John Morosi has been really peppering Twitter right now. JP Morosi, mm -hmm. um, one of them saying that the Rays have engaged in quote advanced trade negotiations ahead of the. Uh, roster setting situation for Rule 5 draft coming on Tuesday. He mentions the Mets, the Cubs, the Reds, and the Angels looking into pitching from the Rays. I don't know who else it could be other than Tyler Glass now. Like, like is he is does that does that excite you? Or do you think that's definitely the target the Cubs are asking about? Well, I mean, I'll just say that yeah. like I think Tyler Glass now is more of like the dream. Like that's what we would but we all want or what we like. I feel like that would be the best yeah. thing that would come out of that, but I'm not necessarily sold that that's what the Cubs have been talking to them about. I would, you know, my, my level headed thinking is it's probably a reliever that we've never heard of. And no, 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 we don't want that. I, 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 I listen, I tweeted last night, you know, Tyler glass. Now you are a cub, like all the 12 year olds on Twitter do. Okay. Like, I, I I would love if, if it was Tyler Glass now, right? But I did see that that our friend of the program, uh, Greg Zumack, he did uh, I don't know what the website's called, but he he did like there there's like it's kind of like the trade machine for like uh, NBA, but it's for MLB, and like he did one, he did it with for Tyler Glass now from the Rays coming to the Cubs, and it said that it have to be. It'd be another similar move of trading Keegan Thompson and Christopher Morrell. I think that's what it's in, it showed mm. in the graphic. You have to go look at the tweet, but um, so yeah, I mean, per perhaps another trade like that if the Cubs were going to trade for a guy like Glassnow, which it's a lot of upside there, but also a lot of risk. Yeah, I mean, he's coming off Tommy John, right, Ryan? Like he had August of twenty one was his Tommy John surgery, but when he's right. Now you're talking about a frontline starter, possibly. Yeah, when he's right, he's a really, really good pitcher, and we know that. Um, I was also going to add in. 
I was gonna add in uh, McClanahan would also be like a dream if you're if you're mm. talking about the Rays. Like I I don't I would say if like if one of them were to be traded, it's probably Glass now. Like more likely to be Glass now. But McClanahan is also up there because he's a really good pitcher too, and he's younger. So that, that that's why I think he's probably less likely to be traded because he's younger. Um, but uh, uh, you know Glass now would be great. And yeah, like Luke said, that's like that's when you're kind of getting up to like okay, this is our at least at least a number two pitcher. When he's at his best, he may be even you know a one. He's not he's not you know uh, probably not Rodon, Scherzer, Kershaw level ace number one. But if he's your number one, you and you back him up with a, with a really good two, three, four, five, then you got a good rotation right there. Uh, so Glasnow would be a really good pickup. I don't I'm I'm curious to see what it would take to get him from the Rays. But if the Cubs are inquiring about him, that I guess we don't know that they are inquiring about him. <laughs> um, but you definitely hope they are, right? Like you hope yeah. the Cubs, when they're looking for uh, a top of the line starting pitcher, a number one, you know, those two guys, but specifically Glasnow, are definitely good options to at least kick the tires on and see what it would take to acquire them. The yeah, people in the chat are correcting me. It uh, it's Glasnow and, and Margot for Morell and Thompson, and the I guess the website's called Baseball Trade Values. Thank okay. you, Sean. Well, so, he's. He's 29, and if I'm, I believe he, they just re-signed him through 24. I think his contract goes through 24. So if you did trade for him, you'd have him for at least two seasons. Now Morell and Thompson, that's uh, he is he is a top line starter. But again, you got a guy that only pitched two games last year. You know, so it's not like mm-hmm. I I. I Tommy John doesn't totally terrify me because sometimes guys come back from Tommy John even better than they were before. It's it's almost expected for a pitcher nowadays that at some point from high school to, to the pros that at some point they're going to have Tommy John surgery. But I don't, I don't know. Would I give that up for him? Probably. You get the, there's a one-year extension on there too. So it's not even just for one year. You get them for two years. Right. You get them 23, 24. So Mm-hmm. Again, it's it's a risk. It definitely is a risk. Um, but he's shown to be great. I mean, the fact that the Rays even have him to begin with is just a – it's not even them. It's like the Pirates are just that stupid. It's one of the worst trades in modern MLB history, at least in the last five years. <laughs> and, like, yeah, he, he before having to have Tommy John, he was – he was he was shoving for them like he's to me he's totally worth that that like if I had to mo- if we had to move Thompson and and Morrell and you're getting him and another guy back like I feel like that's I think I think that's fair because uh, again I I just think there's so much upside with him with him still being young and and again you're it's not like you're say it say it doesn't work out well at least it's not like for five years it's two years you know what I mean like. Yeah. And and how do you and, and if say if it's Thompson and Morell, like do you believe that those guys are going to even reach somewhere near the peak of like what Tyler Glass now even is? Like I, I have a lot of belief in, in Morell being like a really good baseball player for sure. And, and the fact that he's young helps that. Thompson, he's you know, 27, 28, whatever, right? And like we've gone back and forth on whether he's a starter or a reliever, but like Tyler Glass now is a surefire number one starter, like when he's healthy. And with how things are today, like people come off Tommy John and, and get back to form all the time now. It's not even like a rarity. It's like it's like expected now at this point. It's not like it was when I was a kid or when Ryan was a kid. Like with how like medicine is and shit now. Like I don't know. Like if that trade was offered, I I would be like I'd be taking a hard look at it in, in consideration. It wouldn't be an automatic like no for me. No, I'd be I'd be interested in it too, and and then it you know what's the trickle down effect of it? Let's say you do give up Morell and Thompson or whoever it might be, and you make the trade, but you add Glass now. Does that now mean uh, because you've traded assets and not money to get Glass now? Does that now free? What if you added Senga on top of that? What if Glass now and Senga were two additions that you you added your rotation? Or on the flip side, does that now that you have glass now and you know Hendricks is coming back, can you go cheaper with the next pitcher and then dump all the money into free agency and one of the shortstops? Because JP Morosi claims again, like the Cubs are active in this hunt for one of these shortstops, and we're waiting for that first 
domino to go. And I keep saying, I said it again on Twitter, like I want them to be the first domino. I don't want them to be the fourth domino because if they're the fourth domino, you know, they're getting the player that the other three teams didn't want. Not because he's a bad player, but I just don't want the Cubs to be the reactionary team all the time. I want them to, to force the narrative sometimes. And so let's see, let's see what's going on with these shortstops. If they really are, active in the shortstop market and i i don't know when that's coming cody we talked about it at the tailgate like i don't know is that is it is are we going to wait all the way till the the winter meetings are we going to wait a couple weeks before one of these shortstop signs or will somebody aggressively go out and and get one of them i don't know it's interesting because i just feel like it's going to be boris you know especially with correa and bogarts he's just going to keep you know, saying what he's saying and try to increase as much money as is possible. You know, it's just what he does. But again, the Cubs are in a position where like that shouldn't even be an issue, in my opinion. Um, so I guess it just comes down to which one they want most. Like at this point, I don't know which one they want most. It feels like Gray is number one for them, but like if he is, then. Then, like you said, Luke, we you think that we should be doing an emergency podcast this week? Well, then, like, <laughs> get him already. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know where the market is right now. Just all we have is tweets from John Morosi and, you know, all the sources from Gordon Whitmire when he was out there, too, saying that, you know, the Cubs are active in the shortstop market. And they're, you know, they talk to they talk to Scott Boris about Bogarts and and Correa, like. To me, it's you. Know, it's I'm with you, Luke. Like I said it last week, like the Cubs need to set the tone for the offseason. They should be going to get someone. And if it's not the shortstop, then then sign a a Josh Bell or a Jose Abreu. Like sign someone. Like thankfully, nothing has really happened. Nothing really happened over the weekend, so I can't like yell at the Cubs for just sitting on their hands because everyone's sitting on their hands. But like, I don't know, like. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we're waiting until the winter meetings. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, Shane is right. Um, yeah, I knew you. <laughs> I, yeah, just, just, I've been just got word uh, the Cubs officially uh, granted Jason Hayward his release. Um, so that will, for one, that brings the forty man roster down to thirty three. Uh, but it is a move we've been expecting. I know Corey <laughs> was asking me why they hadn't done it on like Friday. <laughs> um, but I mean, with with uh, like the Rule Five protection deadline, you know, setting your forty man, all that stuff. Um, that comes tomorrow. Uh, the Cubs, you know, a day ahead of time, have officially granted Jason Hayward his release. And I know like, it kind of ties into what we're talking about, why the Rays are looking to trade players, right? It's this whole 40-man crunch. Um, Jason Hayward wasn't going to be someone that lasted through this offseason. Like, we knew that. We knew he was getting the release. Uh, Jed talked about it. Jason Hayward talked about it at the end of the season. Uh, but, yeah, so that – yeah, sorry. I was very distracted while you guys were talking, so I'm not sure what we where we were at. But that is uh, right. that, that is the 20. news that we've that's the news that we've gotten. Um, what is it like twenty two million? They still have to pay him next season not to play, right? Something like that. Yeah, twenty two. Yeah. And, and Glass now is like a twenty five million dollar extension. Basically, it's almost the same contract for for a seat. I mean, that's listen. Everybody understands that it's the right move to pay the money and walk away. But and the Cubs can factor in that they've spent twenty two million this off season already. Yeah, not that yeah. that's enough, but I'm just saying, like, they are factoring it in, so you know we should. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But no, it, it, either way, it shouldn't affect how they go about things. It absolutely, should not. Agreed. Yeah, and it frees up a spot in the outfield, which we know, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they're going to be active there too. They need a center fielder, and we're going to get into again in the next segment. We'll we'll rank our confidence pool as if we were picking NFL games. One through ten, ten being the most points. Got to take a uh, each number has to be used. Where do we rank? Where we're confident in what the Cubs will do this offseason? Players at, and I'm I badly, badly missed one, and and it's <laughs> bugging me that I missed it because I I was the first one to put it out, and I, I I sent it into the Slack message for the graphics guys, and I yeah I I definitely missed one. I, I feel yeah, well, there was, about there was it. one that me and Cody both had. I had already had it at the top. I'm like, oh, both of them are going to forget it. I'm going to be the only one that gets it. And all of a sudden I see Cody with it too. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Right. I, I I forgot it. Um, What about the Morosi posting about Kodai Senga? Kind of an update on it. Like 
he put out he did a hit on MLB Network, and when he listed his five teams that are that are interested in talking to his agent, um, it was the Angels, the Dodgers, the Mariners, the Rangers, and the Blue Jays. No mention of the Cubs this time. Now we think the Cubs are interested. We know nice things have been said. Um, and this has been a guy that seems to be kind of a link to the Cubs over and over, but you know, the reason teams are super excited about him, Morosi points out at the worst case scenario, he believes he's a two or a three, but there is potential for him to be somebody's ace depending on the team. So, you know, I look at the Cubs and I'm like, well, there's no reason he couldn't be a two, especially if you don't get glass now, like there's no reason is it possible that he he throws harder than I thought? I saw it, like a 96 for a fastball in some of the video, and I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, he's not just all soft stuff and um, no posting fee, so no draft picks. And it's a guy that you hope turns into Shohei Otani or somebody like that, at least the pitcher part of it, right? Like, I don't know where are, are you. Is your confidence damaged by the fact that Morosi didn't list the Cubs in the top five talking to him? No. Okay. <laughs> no, not with the steam that's been coming around all season, even during the season. Um, and also, Robert Murray, you know, put out like ranking in the top twenty-five free agents, and he mentioned that Senga was part of it, or part of, or the Cubs that were. He listed the Cubs and Giants, who Morosi didn't say. Um, and this isn't against Morosi. I will always use Morosi as a reason to believe that something might happen. But um, in that instance, that moment in that video that is on the internet, no, I'm not using it. I don't. It hasn't changed my mind or took me completely off the thought of the Cubs getting him. So, no, you were focused on Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan most of the morning, you know, trying to figure out <laughs> one of the more bizarre stories and 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 of today, maybe the. Yeah. I think that came out a while ago, though, didn't it? It it has been out for yeah. like they they keep denying it, saying they're just friends. First, it was in at a the concert, pictures. and they just went to a concert. <laughs> then they were shown kind of like snuggling somewhere, and it was like, oh, really? <laughs> now they're on the beach, and he's definitely not just snuggling. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but as far I, as Koda, I would love to be on a fly on the wall, and what yeah. Scottie Pippen thinks of that, and what Michael Jordan yeah. thinks of that. <laughs> <laughs> or just just them in a room talking about it or something like. <laughs> uh, anyway, but uh, but as it goes to Kodai Senga, um, yeah, it was weird. I, I mean, I sent you guys that video of uh, Morosi talking, and to not have said the Cubs was a little shocking to me. I was like, I from everything we've heard, the rumors like the Cubs were in on him pretty quickly. Um, but there's also probably a bunch of teams that are in on Kodai Senga and trying to woo him. Um, we saw something of, about the Giants having like a, um, like a Kodai Senga picture on their on their scoreboard or something like that, a video board uh, over there. So maybe that tells you something that Giants are, are obviously recruiting him. Um, no, I don't think for Morosi to not have said the Cubs means the Cubs are completely out on Senga. Uh, it was just like weird that like I was like, I watched the video and I listened. I'm like, did he not say the Cubs? Okay, I mean, that's, 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 he that's, that's mentioned different. five teams and yeah. didn't mention the Cubs. It's not like he named like the two teams that are super hot on him right now or something like yeah. that. He mentioned five major league teams and didn't put the Cubs on that list. Yeah. I don't that, know. I, I, that I, part it, of it makes me think it's cooled off a little bit. It, and it might have. Like it, that's definitely a possibility. I also just think, like I said, there could be half the league is in on Kodai Senga, and yeah. that's just who Morosi. That could just be who Morosi's heard from most recently. You know, yeah. Like, like that, that could, that could be it. So I don't, I mean, I don't know that I don't put any stock in it. I just wouldn't put too much as far as like that. Uh, that doesn't tell me the Cubs are definitely not, not getting Kodai Sango. That's for sure. Like I, if anyone taking from that, that the Cubs are, are out, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I, I mean, it, you could use other free agents to like, you know, as an example, not necessarily from Morosi, but like, I don't know, like, we sat here and talked about the free agent pitchers out there all season. And like the Cubs aren't mentioned in anything that has to do with Carlos Rodon or Jacob deGrom. So. Yeah, um, no, I've heard basically Rodon's <clears throat> not even a possibility. Like they, yeah. they've already decided that's more than they want for 
Carlos Rodon. But what I'm that saying is, is like, who knows? Like maybe, maybe, maybe a random, uh, random dark, dark horse yeah. comes in. You know what I mean? Like that's just what the nature of free agency is. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I won't. I I feel like the Cubs getting Sango would be very beneficial, and there's a lot of good things to like about it. But at the same time, I also won't be like heartbroken if they don't get mm-hmm. him. I will be heartbroken if they do not get one of the top four shortstops. I'd 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 even be heartbroken if they missed missed on Dansby Swanson. As much as like the discourse of Dansby Swanson over the course of the weekend has basically turned him into basically being a shortstop version of Jason Hayward. Um, as far as what I've read on social media is, which is, I mean, in a way, I guess you can kind of like put use some comparisons, but I mean, the Cubs have to get one of those four guys. And I think that's, to me, that's, that's priority number one, in my opinion. So we're going to see. Agreed. And by the way, back to the, uh, just for one second, I was, I, I forgot to mention in the glass now conversation, I was thinking, well, all right. If you lose Keegan Thompson, we've talked about what a great role he'd be coming out of the bullpen. He could be a total weapon. Yeah, but you could also give that role to Wesneski this year, too, if you like. Maybe that's why he's become a name that's popular. Well, first of all, teams are interested because of what they saw. So teams are going to ask about players that they're interested in. So Morell and Thompson would be two. Steel would be another, but I I would assume he'd be the one they would not want to trade if they didn't have to out of that group of three. So, uh, Ryan, shady rays, yeah. you know. I mean, I I feel like it's a it was a sunny day. It looks like the clouds have come out here in Arlington Heights. You know, like back to my weather days. Yeah, uh, I see a little sun peeking out on my window. There's a sun here. Bit. I don't I don't know. Was still was, sunny. Was there any sun at the tailgate uh, yesterday? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Once, yeah. once it came over the building, you know, the building yeah. blocks the sun. For oh man, there. that building's unbelievable. Yeah, the last time when uh, last week when it was like it was windy and cold and the sun was getting blocked, it was like it was, there was no help, no help from the <laughs> elements at all. Uh, but and when the sun does peak out and you're at the next Bears tailgate, you might want to make sure you have shady rays. Shady rays never understood why sunglasses were so expensive, so they set out to change it. You don't have to break the bank for quality sunglasses this fall because our friends at Shady Rays have you covered. Shady Rays are premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles catered to everyone in every lifestyle. The best part about Shady Rays, they have the most insane protection program in all of eyewear, the lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us that they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. You drop them off a lake, drop them off a cliff, you... Even if you leave them on, you know, the, the roof of your car as you're driving to Home Depot to get a new propane tank, anything, they'll replace them. Even with that strong of a protection program, they still manage to make quality that I can tell you, holding in my hand, seem just as good as any expensive pair that I have ever worn. Shady Rays customers seem to agree with over 200,000 five-star reviews. Shady Rays also provides 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed and have donated over 20 million meals to date. They stand behind their product and told our team that if anyone has a problem, they throw profit out the window to do what it takes to get it right. Free returns and exchanges. You either love the shades or Shady Rays will pay to ship them back. That's it. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season. Use code CHGO for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get two pairs for as low as $54. Remember that code is CHGO. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com where you can find all their newest and best shades. Very good. And our next partner is a product I use, you know, every day, AG1, because I didn't have time, wanted better gut health, more energy, and optimized immune system. Now I've been on it since April, and I love it. It doesn't taste super healthy, but it is super healthy. Instead, it's got a mild tropical taste that I look forward to taking in the morning. Here's what it is. One scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right. A special blend of ingredients supporting your gut health, your nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, aging, all those things. Ryan, if you're under the weather, AG1 will get it done. A noticeable boost of energy, so I take it first thing in the morning. Lifestyle friendly, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, you're all good with AG1. You're investing in -in all-in-one nutritional insurance for less than 3 bucks a day, recommended by professional athletes and more than 7,000 
five-star reviews. So right now, reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. You don't need a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash chgo cubs. Again, athleticgreens.com slash chgo cubs. Take ownership over your health. Pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Uh, who we say in the chat? I saw some uh, a lot of people arguing about Dansby Swanson. Now. Yeah, whether yeah. or not he's legit. I G Wit saying it's been a minute since he uh, checked in. Where you been, man? Uh, G Wit also asked, "Is there?" He said, "Is I forget? Is there a posting fee for Senga? No, no, no posting fee. Uh, he's officially a free agent um, versus obviously teams. Because what what is it like? It, that's just basically NPB." releasing players to go to MLB, yeah. right? But they're like, oh, wait, we need money back. So it's pretty much a buyout, he's, right? Yeah, he's paid long. He's he's paid or he's played long enough that yeah. you don't have to pay the league for him to leave it. Yeah. So he's, he's yeah, kind of earned that right to leave without costing a major league team that posting fee. And mm -hmm. there's no draft pick compensation either. So that's like – um, that's why – so not only is he a good player, but – financially it's easier to do it than some yeah. of the other players that come from Japan. So that's why a lot of teams are in on them yeah. or at least uh, Shane, kicking the tires. Shane asked real quickly a couple minutes ago, uh, the Cubs are at, so he asked, are the Cubs at 33 or 34 as far as players in the 40 man? My last count, they're at 33. Uh, I believe like the, the, like Cubs.com has them at 34, uh, but they also include Alexander Vizcaino in there who we know is uh, still on the restricted list. So wouldn't count against the forty man. Well, over um, the weekend, I saw on Twitter over the weekend one of the Cubs prospect prospect guys out there. He just tweeted a screenshot of Vizcaino's like player profile on like I guess like whatever the minor league website is, and it said that he was active now. So like I I don't know. I and I could be wrong. Yeah, Sorry as for far pushing as fake information, if I am. Yeah, as far as we know and as far as we've been told, he is still on the restricted list. Hmm. So you are you're pushing fake news, Cody. <laughs> well, I'm taking it from a source that's very uh knowledgeable about the minor leagues more so than I am. So shout out to Todd. Um <laughs> uh, by I saw a little yumper also say uh hey, Morosi didn't even mention Senga and the Cubs and that's what we were just talking about like it was odd that he mentioned five teams and didn't even mention the mm -hmm. Cubs. And so does that mean anything? We don't know. Yeah, um, I, I will say to that also, someone earlier in the chat said something that like the Cubs will be in on saying until he signs because of the relationship with his agent. Uh, and I agree. I, yeah. I think that's actually a good point because obviously um, the agent, the, 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 the he shares the same agent with um, Seiya Suzuki, um, who's another like he may just keep recruiting Kodai and Senga until the end until he's officially not signing with the Cubs because he would obviously like him to, to be there. But he also shares an agent with, like, Nick Madrigal. Um, so there's a, there's a relationship there between um, – I think it's Wasserman is the name of the agency and the Cubs, obviously. So um, there's some there's something there. And I, I would agree that if Kodai is still not signed, the Cubs will keep reaching out to, to his agent because that's a guy that they may want really badly. Yeah. It's also possible that the Cubs have had that conversation because they know the agent well and have said, "Go get." we understand if you're not ready to take this offer now, go get your offers before you accept anything, come back to us and at least let us have a conversation. You know, like that happens a lot where teams have that initial conversation at the GM meetings and the agent wants to explore everything, so he gives it a few more weeks. And just because he wouldn't be one of the five teams that was currently – having a conversation or talking like Ryan was saying earlier, doesn't mean that the Cubs haven't had the conversation and the agent knows, Hey, eventually I have to go back and tell the Cubs what's going on. So don't give up hope on Kodai Senga if you're really into him. Um, Shane says said, the Cubs website does show Vizcaino is on the yeah, active list. And that's what I'm saying that we were told that he's still on the restricted list. Oh, so. okay. That's what All I'm right. trying to tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, there so you explained it a little bit. More. You know how I am with this roster shit. Like I'm awful with it. Yeah, I, I don't know nothing. 
but there we go. So it's, it not, should part be, of, it's should, not part of Dell metrics. No, it's, it's no, just not a factor in it. No, no. It, sh- it should be down to 33. I just my wish it was so much easier to like understand and process. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, you give me a 40 man and then you got all these other mans. And I'm like, just put them all on one thing. There you go. <laughs> That's my opinion. Uh, <laughs> by the way, talk, we mentioned prospects earlier tomorrow. Corey Friedman and uh, Greg Huss will be calling in too, right? So we'll talk prospects. Corey actually held a white claw for Cody yesterday for probably 45 minutes at some point before he set it down. He said, hold my white claw. I'll be back. And then uh, Cody just disappeared. We're like, where'd he go? He was thawing was out. Was he dancing? Inside. Was he dancing? I went, like warm, I went to warm up. <laughs> I went to the bathroom. <laughs> 45 <laughs> minutes that, later, he comes back. Where's my white like, claw? We're like, in that like coffee shop that's like right next to dollop, where the yeah. tailgate is. <laughs> Yeah. And and Brian saying agree with you, Cody. The roster rules are too confusing. For they sure. Are. Like they that's are. that's why being a GM, there's there's more to it than fantasy, mm-hmm. fantasy mm-hmm. baseball and fantasy football players and stuff. Like there's just so much more. And and that's the way in every other sport too. Like there, there's so much manipulating that they have to do with numbers and numbers crunching that almost every team certainly now has numbers guys that have to run those numbers and know what's going on with all that stuff to help the GM out. All right, let's get to our confidence pool in Cubs offseason moves. So we're ranking them 1 to 10. We're Our 10 players that we think the Cubs might make moves on, we each came up with our own list. One is the least confident. If if this guy gets signed or traded to the Cubs this offseason, you get the point, the, the number associated with it in points. So I, I tried to do my Valpo math, and I think that's a total of 55 points if you got one through 10. I don't know if that's right or not, but don't hold me to it. I'm just saying, 55, one through 10. I went through the calculator like 10 different times. It came back 55 at least seven of those times. So uh, 70% of the time, times. 70% of the time on my Valpo calculator, that is 55 points for the total. I got. I also got 55, so I think we're good. I got a 57 and a 53 Loop. too, so I. <laughs> Luke went to the Duke of the Midwest, so I mean, right. clearly this Midwest. is all right. <laughs> Dominant basketball school. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, all right, so let's do one through five first. Who wants to go first with their one through five pointer? So this I'll is go first. Kinda, these are guys you think the Cubs might be in on, but you're not as confident as your next five will be. Okay. Uh, okay. So number one, I have Archie Bradley, uh, and here I'll just list them, and then I'll go into it. Uh, so number one, I have Archie Bradley. Two, I have Dansby Swanson. Three, Cody Bellinger. Four, um, Xander Bogarts. And then five, Carlos Correa. Um, so I guess the two shortstops, I'm just in the middle ground. Like, I think they're the priority. I think they need to go get one of them. But given recent history, it's hard for me to just fully believe that they're going to automatically get one of them. So – when it comes to that, Michael Collada, I'm with you. Like, I get it. We've been hurt way, way too many times. Um, so, yeah, they have – actions speak louder than words. So that's why I have uh, those three shortstops in the, my bottom five more so than in the top. So – and then I listed Archie Bradley, number one, as le- like as someone who could, but, like, I don't necessarily believe it, only because I think he's coming off injury and he has a history of being a really good reliever – and the Cubs have known to go get guys like that. Like David Robinson was like a guy like that. I think he only pitched like 18 innings last season. So I'm assuming he got hurt. I think that's what happened. Um, and I was just trying to find a reliever that I figured you two wouldn't put in there. So <laughs> I just chose something different. I He does kind of look like someone the Cubs have would, would go after just for the, you know, the, mm-hmm. of how they build bullpens. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I, you know, and Bellinger, obviously, like, I I would rather have him, have him over Kiermaier, but it depends on if the Dodgers, are, you know, non-tender him a contract or not. You know what I mean? So I think he would, I think he would be a great fit uh, as a pl- platoon option in the outfield uh, with Brandon Davis or whoever. Um, but I'm not significantly, I'm not like super confident about it. It's just something yeah. that I would like to see happen. So. Uh, I guess Correa would be the one that I think is more likely to happen out of those five. Um, but again, I'm with you, Michael Collada. Like, actions speak louder than words. Prove, like, show us. So, 
Cody's All right, Ryan, who's, like... who's your one through five? So these are guys you think the Cubs might make a play for, either with a trade or free agency, but you're not as confident in what it would be compared to your next five. Yeah. Um, so my, I mean, my top 10, well, I guess my, my top five, so it'd be like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, right? Is that yeah. how, how we do it? Um, we're, we're, no, one one is what you like the least, least confident because yeah. if you get it right you only get one point so that you yeah. would put your least amount of confidence into your number one so i'm going i'm going from my top most confident um it's pretty similar to i know cody's uh just said his but it's fairly similar i have drew smiley at number 10 um i know the so that's cup. your most that's your most confident yeah, you're going confident. you're going out of you're order here, but all right here. okay going going so, wait, so, so we're, we're going wait so you want we're me to doing one through bottom? five we're doing one okay you want me to go one through five okay okay, okay. That's, what yeah, was, that's, that's what i was confused about okay <laughs> this is a, this is missouri <laughs> this. here what, what's going us. on here right i go one through five you right are now. feeling weather so my 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 least confident pick i guess number one i put omar narvaez okay catcher Cubs are still interested. I, I think the Cubs should be interested in a catcher. I don't know that PJ and and John are. Uh, you go into next season confident that those two will be your top two catchers for a playoff team. I think Omar Narvaez would be a good addition to that. And then I also just don't think that Wilson's coming back. I think that you know that time is done. Uh, he will eventually reject the qualifying offer, become a free agent. I don't see the Cubs bringing him back. Um, so, you know. Enter Omar Narvaez. That's a three catcher rotation right there. But I'm also just not that confident in it. I think that could happen, uh, but I wouldn't put my money on it. So it goes Narvaez. Uh, I had David Robertson uh, for obvious reasons. He fit in well last year, was a really good pitcher, fits in again next year, I think, uh, in this bullpen. Veteran guy, uh, back end guy, could fit in, slot in really well, honestly, with like Brandon Hughes. I think they would see Brandon Hughes as a, as a back end reliever now, and he's a lefty. Then you got a righty and Robertson, uh, but relievers are very tricky, and there's a lot of them. So who knows if they bring back uh, Robertson or not? Um, then I rounded it out with three. My three is Bellinger, four is Swanson, and five is Bogarts. And Bellinger, we still got to even see if he stays with the Dodgers, right? Like he still has to yeah. get released at some point uh, before he becomes a free agent. But I, I think we're assuming he does, and then I like we talked about a couple of weeks ago on the show, like that would be a good flyer in my opinion to take uh, Bellinger center field also can play some first base here and there. Um, and then Swanson and Bogarts, I think are like the third and second lead most likely, or like if I'm the Cubs, those are my two and three at this point. Cause it feels like Turner's not going to end up coming to the Cubs. It feels like he, it, the rumors have started to move elsewhere. Um, so, but those two are right there as far as like, if they don't get, the, the guy I think is the number one shortstop, then those are probably the, the two and three uh, Bogarts and Swanson. Brian G says, this is more confusing than the roster rules. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. What is confusing? Only Ryan was confused by this. What is confused. confusing? Have you never done a confidence pool for the NFL? I've been doing them since 1980. No, I, I, I know what the confidence pool out when is. I was a freshman in high school in 86, for God's I know sake. What, like, I know what the confidence pool is. I just I didn't understand the way you wanted me to go through them. Oh, you, yeah, you didn't understand that we wanted to start – Least at confident. The bottom. Why would I start? Why would you start at the least spot? At least confident. I want to be. I want to be confident off the bat. Well, because then it's like the excitement level starts to drop, right? If you if you start. All right. From the, All right. I don't no, know. I I just I I I wrote I ranked Ryan them in says order. Go Ryan check the, confused me. <laughs> go check the Slack. I had the order correctly. I just didn't know you wanted me to start from the bottom. I was confused gotcha. on that. All right. And I already. So and my already, one through my one through five. A lot of the same reasons. Like I. David Robinson is my one because I'm not sure that reunion is happening, but they do need a reliever. So I thought, all right, I'll at least give it a point. So I've got one. Um, I went Dansby Swanson as my number two. I think he's the least likely shortstop, unlike um, Collado, who probably thinks he's the most likely. I think he's the least likely, although the chat ar arguing about him, everybody's been saying he's got more home runs than the other three. So there is power there, which is something the Cubs are looking for. Uh, I put Cody Bellinger three because it would take more steps to get him to Wrigley Field. Uh, first of all, it would take the Dodgers letting him go. And frankly, I don't think the Dodgers are eventually. I know there's been rumors of it. I just don't think he's actually going to leave L.A. My four is a guy I don't think you guys have. 
And I put him in there because the Cubs still need a first baseman. And I think if the Abreu thing is all smoke, that Josh Bell might be a possibility. So I put Bell as my number four. And my fifth point, I probably should have flipped four and five, but I put Trey Turner number five. Um, I don't think he's super likely. For me, he's a guy I would want. He's either one or two in my wish list. But I think the confidence I have in that happening, that Trey Turner ends up here, especially because today I was reading reports saying that uh, he wants like an eight or nine year deal. And I just don't see mm -hmm. the Cubs ever giving out an eight or nine year deal. Not, not to, not to a guy who's not a top three player in baseball. M maybe you give that to like Shohei, but you're, you're not giving an eight or nine. Year. I don't think they will call me crazy. So that's why I put Turner at five. I probably should have put Turner at like two or three. Cause we know they need a shortstop. But I'm not. If he's asking for eight or nine years, I could see the Cubs bailing out of that conversation real quickly. Mm -hmm. I don't even have Turner in my ten. Yeah, I, is that, how much is I that don't why? Because you think he's just going to be? I just don't think the Cubs are going to go get yeah, him. Just no, no confidence. I think they would. I think I. I think I like him they, as a player. Yeah, I, I, I honestly would love the Cubs to get Trey Turner. I just. To me, it's like okay, if he wants that big of a deal, then why don't you just pay Correa or pay Correa? You know what I mean, and that, yeah. and that's because he's mainly because he's younger, and he's just as good as D. Like the him and him and Trey Turner are like essentially like the same guy, except one's younger by a, a little bit. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like maybe 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 there is some likelihood. I mean, DraftKings has him plus seven fifty to be to be taken by the Cubs. So oh, you know, wait, no, wait a minute, you can actually place that bet. But you know, I don't know. Well, that means if you bet. A hundred. Uh, how does seven fifty plus seven fifty work? Explain uh, this. A hundred dollars on a bet at plus seven fifty. I believe you would win seven hundred and fifty bucks if I'm mathing correctly. Yeah, I don't. I that that's no. part of it. I don't understand. I, we. I have to put the dollar amount in the little box, and then I can tell you. And then it tells you. You just let the computer do it. You, yeah. You let the calculator. Ben says it you out win seven fifty. There you go. Math. There you go. Um, there you go. So you walk away with eight fifty. So yeah, you have to, you have to bet a hundred to win seven fifty. Yes, and yeah. then you would eventually have eight fifty because you get your hundred dollars back if it, it actually seems like a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. So that means <laughs> it's not super likely, right? We'll see. Um, okay, so uh, I guess the back. Are we doing the back half now? Yeah. No, Cody, okay. give your six uh, through ten. Okay, so I I kind of read my list wrong. Um, oh, so geez. let me just do it. <laughs> I, I, did I, the, I, did the, I did the I did the right section wow. of it, but I didn't read the right, correct order. All right, so I went one Archie Bradley, Dan Swanson number two, th Cody Bellinger three, and then Trey Turner number four and number five Xander Bogarts. That's why Trey right. Turner wasn't on my freaking list because I just forgot to put his name there. I was actually moving guys around and I forgot to copy and paste. So okay, that's my, well that's my that answer. was right. Now you're going to go six, okay. seven. So the, eight, now, nine, so I had Xander Bogarts five. And, and, you know, honestly, you could switch Xander Bogarts or with Carlos Correa either way. Like, maybe Bogarts has a higher possibility because it seems like the Cubs could maybe get him on a shorter-term deal in terms of years, uh, at least from what I've read. So maybe, you know, I think those two are ne neck and neck in terms of, like, the possibility. So whatever. After that, I got a, I have Abreu at 7, Kiermaier at 8, Josh Bell at 9, and Drew Smiley at 10. Now, I think Drew Smiley is going to be a Cub. Like, it would, honestly wouldn't – like, I don't think that's a surprise to me. Like, they, they've, they've said they want to bring the guy back. He was really solid for them. Would have had even better numbers if he didn't get – if he wasn't hurt. Hell, they probably would have been able to trade him then. But it's everything shows that he wants to be here. So, you know, like, I, I think that's going to happen. I put Josh Bell ahead of Jose Abreu just because I think – I, I, I did it more so just because that's who I think I want more, to be honest with you. Uh, switch hitter. And, um, you know, I, he's younger. I, I just think there's more – you can get more value out of, of that. But, I mean, I, the only way that I see Abreu more so than Bell is just because of short-term years. So, I mean, I don't know. And then Kiermaier. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. You got uh, it. You got it. Obviously, they need center field help, and he makes the most sense at center field 
for defensive versatilities, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I do think Drew Smiley will definitely be a cub. I, there's one that I would say that is absolutely going to be a cub, I would say, is Drew Smiley. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that I think that Bell, Abreu, and Kiermaier, two of those three will also be Cubs. I just don't know of the two first basemen which one will be it. But I, I am fairly confident that one of those two first basemen will be will be Cubs. And if the and if the Dodgers hang on to Bellinger, then Kiermaier is definitely going to be a Cub. Did you see Collada's comment? Because I was sitting here wondering. I wonder what his one through ten would look like. Who he who he <laughs> really believes. And he goes, Ortega, Schwindel, Higgins, <laughs> Rivas, Swanson. <laughs> I don't understand the hate for Dansby Swanson. Like I no, get it. I don't either. I, I, I get it. it. I get it. I'd be happy. He... I'd be happy if he was the guy, especially if, if he was the guy at short and they went big and got glass now and Senga and you know, whatever. As as long as they the other moves are are big going with them. If he's the mm-hmm. only big move, then I'm a little disappointed in the offseason. Right. But if, if you get him at short and you add guys like Bellinger or Bell or Abreu and you fill out your roster more because your shortstop is good, but maybe not as highly now, thought of a Turner or Bogart, only, okay. The, the only way that I would be upset about getting Dansby Swanson is if they sign him to like a seven or eight year deal. Yeah. That's the only way that I would be upset about it. Now, if you get him, if you have to pay him at a higher AAV, but you're getting him at like a five or six year deal, then Done. fine, whatever. Yeah. Like at least you're getting a really good defensive player and he's coming off his best offensive season of his career. And I know that is like huge Jason Hayward vibes because he also came from Atlanta or played at Atlanta once. And he too was coming off his best off, off offensive season of his career when he came to the Cubs. Like I totally get it. Totally get it. But you're getting him at a pretty young age. Like, it's the same idea. Is like you're getting him entering his prime, and you're hoping that he takes that next step, which means that if you did get him, you'd probably get him with some opt-outs in that contract. So you're hoping that he would play better than he did with the Braves. And, again, he's, he's already won a championship. He brings, like, experience of winning a championship. Like, there's a lot of things to like about the guy. Like, I just don't understand why everyone just – is like completely out on the guy. Like I agree, Bogarts, Turner, and um, Correa I, are definitely a better player than him. But it's not a it's not a complete loss. You you don't lose the off season if you get Dansby Swanson. He's it's a really good baseball player. So I that's just my two cents. I know everyone in the chat's going to disagree with that, but like he's better than having Nick Magical over at second base for. However many games, if if he can even stay on the field, so mm-hmm. I, 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 I I I I'm done. Go ahead. What is that, Cody? What are you drinking over there? I'm drinking an Elani uh, energy drink because I'm gonna go to the gym after this. Oh, look at that! Yeah, as if the show wasn't giving you enough juice. Yeah, you stay active, my drink. friends. Stay yeah. active. I need to go to the gym to sweat out like all of the sends I made yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. Ryan. Give all us right. your sixth here in the six through ten, starting with six. All right. So my six uh, is Kodai Senga. Um, I guess I he probably would have been a little higher on my confidence, like over the weekend. Uh, but like today, seeing some of the things flowing around on there, the confidence is a little bit lower. Again, I think I don't think the Cubs are out on him at all, um, and I don't think that they are gonna just leave the Kodai Senga sweepstakes. I think they have a good relationship with him and uh, or what with his agents and would love to have him here. So um, as far as confidence, I don't, I'm not as confident they'll sign him, but I think they'll be in there till the end. Um, then I move up to Carlos Correa. He is again, a, I, I don't have Turner even on my board uh, just because of all the rumors that have come out. I'm not, I'm just, I don't think Trey Turner is going to be a cub, um, but I had the other two a little bit lower Correa is my the highest ranked shortstop on there. Um, I still think he's of the four. Uh, again, if I'm if I'm the Cubs and I'm in control of the Cubs, um, he would be at the top of my wish list. Um, I guess you got to see what the contract that he's looking for is because we know the Cubs aren't happy about the. I don't love the idea of giving out a, a big long contract, but um, I do think that uh, if any one of those guys is worth it, it's probably Carlos Correa to me. Uh, but he's number seven. 
Kevin Kiermeyer, number eight for me. Uh, we know pretty much everything Cody said as well. You know, Cubs need center field help. Um, Kiermeyer is going to be on the market. He was hurt last year, but he is a good defender when he has been healthy. Um, maybe the Cubs, maybe that maybe the bat shows up a little bit enough to to be at least average league average hitter. But the the defense it feels like is what you're getting Kevin Kiermeyer for. Uh, especially in center field and the Cubs ranked last in defensive run saved at center field among all 30 major league teams. Um, they need to step it up <laughs> in, in that department. Um, and I think Kiermaier, as long as he's healthy, would provide a good glove for that. Um, and then rounding out uh, Jose Abreu, number nine. Um, I think the Cubs want him. I think they're interested in him. Uh, I think that interest is mutual um, and he fits in well. And, you know, Bruce mm-hmm. Levine's been on it. <laughs> he's been on it all since the offseason started. The Cubs want Jose Abreu and, um, you know, that's again, it, it won't be you're not breaking the bank for him. You're not giving him a long term deal. Um, but I think he'd fit in well, especially if they bring up Matt Mervis um, for next season. Like, I think they would plug in well together. That DH spot helps with that as well. So uh, I think if, if any first baseman is, is going to be signed by the Cubs, uh, I think their number one would be Jose Abreu. And you just kind of kind of see see how that plays out. Um, number 10, Drew Smiley. Um uh, he wants to be back. We pretty much know the Cubs want him to be back. Uh, it's not going to be, again, probably not another crazy long-term deal. Not going to be breaking the bank for him. Um, he fit in well here. He pitched well in here while he was healthy. Um, I just think that the match makes sense. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be counting on him next year to be anything more than, like, your fourth or fifth starter. Uh, I think he would fit in well there. Um, so yeah, number 10, I, I think, honestly, I think it's only a matter of time till Drew Smiley is re-signed. Like I, he's my number 10 because I don't think he's going anywhere else. I think he's staying in Chicago, but yeah, that's free agency for you. Anything can happen, but that, those are my top 10. Uh, very good list. I like both your lists. Um, mine's going to be less impressive, but just as interesting. And it's coming up after a couple moments, uh, talking about our partners, by the way, Michael Klausman saying, Hey, the lighting changes at Wrigley, they have cost more than they expected. And that's going to impact. He's saying impact their signing of free agents. Ah, Michael, no, no, no. Those are new led lights. Those are saving Tom Ricketts money. The com ed energy oh efficiency program committed to helping families and businesses in the communities. We serve save money and energy. ComEd offers free facility assessments that can help you find energy saving opportunities, whether it's lighting HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes, an authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. It can be done in person or virtually and lasts approximately two hours. Then within three to four weeks, customers receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. So don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today. For energy saving tips and to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. That is comed.com slash powering biz. And if you're ready to sign up for a facility assessment, you can also call them at 1-855-433-2700 during normal business hours to speak with a comed energy efficiency program representative you can also email them at business ee at comed.com or request an assessment online at their website comed.com slash facility assessment uh seems like a good idea listen yeah. the Cubs wouldn't be putting in energy efficient lights if it wasn't going to save money in the long run absolutely they had a dark ballpark for a long time now they're going to have better lights cheaper lights and they're going to save on their energy bill absolutely you know Ryan was talking about Shady Rays earlier. If you get your Shady Rays, you can put your sunglasses on when you lose all your bets like I did last night, mm-hmm. okay? That way to hide your – you can hide your pain from looking at your your bet slips that did not yeah. cash on drafting, yeah. all right? Uh, painful stuff from the Chicago Bulls last night. I'm not over it, um, but I would assume is going to be on the Bulls show today, so you guys should go watch it. Oh, uh, yeah. So hey, you, go, you could go on DraftKings. Like, I, like I've said, NBA fans, the, the wait is over. Basketball is back, so tip off the season with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can make any $5 NBA Moneyline bet and get $200 in free bets 
if your team wins. Check this out. In addition to usual bets, everyone can boost their winnings up to 100% with Draft with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, opt-in, and place a stepped-up same-game parlay today. With payouts bigger than ever, DraftKings Sportsbook is where I go to bet on the NBA. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code CHGO. Make any $5 bet this week and get $200 and free bets if your team wins only a DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions re- apply. See show notes or details in the YouTube or podcast description. That said, Drake minus 12 <laughs> and Maine plus 20 and a half parlay on DraftKings today. We got some teenagers dribbling some basketballs tonight, and I like those two schools. Maine yeah. going up against Boston College, who stinks. Couldn't even cover against Detroit Mercy. And then Drake, they're going up against a really young team that has a bunch of new guys. They're trying to gel, gel, gel. J- the Drake is favored to win the Missouri Valley this year. 12-point favorites, that's it. Feed me the Bulldogs. Let's go. Yeah. If I could uh, bet Illinois against Mon- Monmouth tonight, I would. But I can't unless I go to a book, which eventually I will be able to whenever the one at Wrigley is finally built. Thank Cody's you. the only person I know who bets on Detroit Mercy games. Yeah. I, I'm fading Boston College all season now after that game. So, uh, there you go. all right, here's here's my much awaited six through ten, and I will admit that I blew it. I I forgot Drew Smiley. I put my list in yeah. first, then you guys followed up. Like you, you guys took like two hours to follow up my list that was made public on our Slack channel, and I forgot <laughs> Drew Smiley. So if Drew Smiley, if and when he signs with the Cubs, I'm out of this because you guys are both going to get like ten points. So. Yeah. I'm pretty much done before it starts, no. unless somehow Drew Smiley is swept yeah. away by a hot offer from the Cardinals. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's what I'm saying. We both, me and Cody, both have him at ten. So for some yeah, reason, yeah, you guys are right. He high doesn't. High. That's ten right points high. right out, right out. Mm-hmm. So. It's a big factor. So I went uh, Glass now at six, just because I would like to see it happen in the next 48 hours. Uh, I just think he'd be a great fit on the team. I'm yeah. I'm happy to do it for two years. I don't think Thompson and Morrell would be too much, especially if, let's say, that two years had a third-year option on it, team option on it. Then I think you're really talking about locking down a guy, coming off Tommy John, sure, but it's just not the same surgery that mm-hmm. it used to be. Um, I put Carlos Correa at seven. I, it's probably very high and very optimistic, but I do think they're going to get one of the shortstops. And I think that's the guy that, if they had their choice, they would get. Whether or not the contract is going to line up, I don't know. But I'm trying to stay positive and say Correa, seven. Senga, eight. I, I'm Morosi's list didn't have it today as one of the five teams that he's talking to. I just think where there's smoke, there's fire there. And I do think the Cubs are interested. I know a lot of other teams are. I think Sayat being here already and talking to him certainly doesn't hurt. And if the Cubs are willing to give the money, and again, I don't think their goal is to give up prospects. So if they don't have to give up prospects, I think they'd rather pay, which is it shows you how they landed say last year. They'd rather spend uh what what do they say sensibly than they would trading away the prospects that they just tried to pile up. Um I have a Brayu at nine. I don't One, know if two. I believe it. I don't know if I believe it or not, but I that's where I have my, I, I think mm-hmm. he's at least going to consider the Cubs. I, I, and I went Kiermaier 10. Cause I think that makes more sense than Bellinger just cause they don't have to give up as much. He's a name we've heard for a long time. Um, and he's not a guy that would block anybody in the outfield. He'd be there. Yeah. He'd be a nice fit. He would make the team better for the next couple of years. And you wouldn't have to make a major investment if you're going to spend your money on someone like Correa and or make those investments on Glass now, Senga, whoever it might be, then Kiermeyer makes sense as a yeah. moderate investment at center field. Yeah, that's where I was at too. And that's why like I think we've all kind of had like one of the shortstops and one of the center mm-hmm. fielders higher on the list. And then like some of like the second or third options lower. Like I had Bellinger, uh Swanson and Bogart's a little lower on the list, but I had Kiermeyer and Correa higher because like I do think those would be the top choices, uh, in my opinion. 
but then like you get lower like oh they don't get either of those guys but you do want some of these other guys still on the board because they also make sense too um you don't want them all high because they're not going to sign all of them but you you had to like sprinkle them around somewhere just to get some points yeah don't expect choice don't expect choice a to be coming in for the cubs at outfield first base catcher Mm -hmm. starting pitcher shortstop you just hope in reality, you're hoping they get their first choice at one of those positions and then the others filter in nicely. Like you still hope they get good players, but I, if they're going to fill a major need at one position, I hope it's shortstop. Yeah. I, I'm i going to take a hit by not having, having Sanga in my list, but maybe we'll see. Maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I've got him at eight, but I, I would, I could have I easily would put him at five. I should have put him in there in the middle somewhere. Yeah. But whatever. I I just like there's nothing to give up other than I money. I just think that there's more likelihood that the Cubs sign Abreu or Josh Bell more so than Senga, I guess, and that's why it kind of took the spot. But who knows? All I know is that I'm with you. We, they got to get a shortstop. One of the four. I don't care. And if I have to come on here every day – and Stan, all four of them, all the people who are like, I don't want Correa because he was on the cheating Astros. I don't care. He should be a Cub if he's the last shortstop on the market. All the people who don't want Swanson because apparently he's the shortstop version of Jason Hayward. I don't care. I don't care. We don't know how things are going to play out. And you, he's better than Nick Madrigal. I'm sorry, Ryan. It's the facts. It's the facts. <laughs> Feed me someone who can play – Elite defense up the middle with Nico Horner for the next five to six years at least, and then give me the rest after that. We need one of those four. I don't care who. Give me one. Thank you. If By the way, if you could get glass now for Keegan Thompson and Madrigal instead of Morrell, now I'm totally in on that deal for sure. Um, we're going to talk more about this probably tomorrow. If, we, it, if something big happens – This afternoon or tonight, we'll have another emergency podcast. We'll be right back here doing it again. Cody will be sweating college basketball while he's talking baseball. Um, Greg Huss is going to join us, uh, prospect expert, tomorrow. Corey Friedman's going to be in studio. Hopefully, we've got a Cubs deal to talk about. And that's what we're hoping for, right? Yeah. Something, right? Just just something to happen. Something. That's anything. That's that's what we want. (laughs) Just something, something that's something that's not speculation, something that actually happened that we can dig into. Like that's that's what I'm looking forward to. And if <laughs> and if it's a pitcher, maybe we could tell Brendan to hop on and he can that's right. walk us yeah. through all his 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 stat cast things that we don't understand. No, just graphics and all kinds of heat <laughs> maps and stuff that uh, just <laughs> confuse me. Exactly. Uh, all right, so Huss and Friedman tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Uh, Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by DraftKings, America's top-rated sports book. Make sure you use the code CHGO when you sign up and download that app, and we will see you back here either with breaking news or tomorrow for more mm-hmm. Cubs offseason talk. Until then, fly the W.